A very good evening to tonight's edition of Breeding to Win. We've got a full lineup for you tonight. Let's go straight and take a look at what's in store for us. We're going to catch up with both Brett Crawford and Eric Sands. Fiona Rams that chats to them about the upcoming KZN season. We also take a look at the Havisham Park Stallion evening. And uh, what a great success that was. Andrew Bond will tell us more. We also catch up with the update on Captain of All, a new young stallion. He's a son of Captain Al and he's had his first stake success out in the Eastern Cape with Tyra Lang. And we'll bring you a little bit more on that shortly too. And we also bring you more about a Freeman sire. John Freeman Stallions performing at the top of their games too. But let's go straight into tonight's show and we'll catch up with Fiona Ramsden who chats to both Eric Sands and Brett Crawford. The last time we were here at Eric Sands Yard, Rainbow Bridge had just won the match. We're back here again today to chat to Eric and catch up with Rainbow Bridge's progress and the Durban season. Great to have you on the show again, Eric. Thank you very much, Fee. We're standing here with Rainbow Bridge. He's had his holiday. He looks absolutely fantastic. Yeah, he's put on 10 kilos. Uh, he's in full work now and he's holding that weight there. It's nice to have that bit of weight to play with before the trip and uh, a lot of hard work to come. Really Before he goes off holiday. to Durban, yeah, he had a lovely time out there. He's had a working holiday. Uh, he wasn't out of work, he just carried on trotting every morning and spent the day in the paddocks. And when will you ship him up to Durban? Plan to give him a gallop. I'd like this, uh, his coat to stand up a little bit, as we say, uh, before he goes. Um, so he'll have a gallop before he goes, and then uh, in May there's the drill hall. So he can have a gallop at Gravel and see Gravel. It's good. He doesn't want to play ball with us this morning, but that's fine, that's okay. And will you, will you take a companion for him, or are you just going to uh, use other horses there? We'll just play it by ear. We just uh, we test a lot of things with him and try to play what makes him happy, and whatever makes him happy, we'll do. Yeah, well, he seems very calm and, and, and well he's behaved. A, yeah. He's very uh, well behaved at home, and he just loves his grass, so we have to tend with him. Is this gonna... But yeah, we all know he gets a little bit heated at race day, but I'm sure you've got a plan. What will you take him to Gravel, show him, show him around, and, and do pretty much as you did here, get him used to the course? Oh, well, he'll have to go see the course. Once he's seen a course, he's a pretty straightforward animal from that point of view. Once he's seen a course, he seems to know. Durbanville, Kenilworth, he just uh, takes it in his run. But it's, it's the travel and, and race day that gets him going. Um, um, so it will be pretty, whatever he dictates to us, uh, we'll, we'll, he'll tell us what he wants and we'll do it. Well, Rainbow Bridge was just getting a little bit fidgety munching the grass here in the stable block, so we've just put him back in the stable, so we'll pick up with that question, Eric. Mike and Norma Ratchet have just bought this horse, and there's a bit of pressure on for you because it's uh, Mike's ambition to win the July. He's been chairman of Durban Turf Club for so long, and uh, he's done racing so well there, and his box is right about, about long, above the finishing line, so... If anybody deserves the July, it would be Mr. Rattray. Uh, I'm really glad to have him back in the yard. He had horses with me uh, a while ago. Um, listen, it's his aim. The horse is good enough. Uh, we got to do the work and uh, all things being equally, he could get there. He will get there. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be lovely for them to win as owners. And as you said, Raymond Ridge is perfectly capable. We know, we know that. But it's all about his temperament, how he takes to Durban. But, you know, there's no reason why he shouldn't. Hey, I mean, it's a nice, nice, nice gallop, it's a nice place to work. You know, I've got a, a small string and for me to go to Durban with one horse is just not fair on the rest of my horses. So I had the option of, I would really have liked to have sent him to Ashburton where it's a quieter and he could go with Duncan, my ex-assistant who knows me and we know each other's ways in, with horses. But it means a longer float ride, which is not in his interest. So we have to opt to go with Brett, which you, you, as you know, he was my assistant as well. So they're both equal in my mind, uh, both Brett and Duncan. 
just um, summer felt is a bit closer and uh, Anton oil can be there more so the the just he will he'll either settle down or he won't settle down. I'm sure in his surroundings he's going to be just like he is now he's just he loves the attention and if we give him the attention and we look after him he'll deliver the goods that's always been his case. Well it actually sounds perfect a perfect situation if Anton will be able to bond with him and ride him a lot more often I'm sure he's going to settle in there. Anton's got great hands and Anton's very good as this type of horse uh, he's, he's top class he's a professional um, I can't see why there should be any uh, hiccups bar in his own nature and that's only him anticipating the race and uh, so it's, he's, he's a competitive horse, he's got the competitive nature um, he's just uh, things, will, things will come our way and we'll have to deal with them. And obviously it's a long way to travel to Zerb and are you slightly worried about that he does get a little bit upset travelling? We'll probably bigger uh, take him with a companion to start and uh, see how he settles the end of that and book a nice big double float, almost make like a stable of it and uh, if I'm worried and if need be I'll travel with him and if we have to drip him or drench him on the way we'll do it. Whatever needs to be done we will do. Yeah, that's fantastic stuff and of course you're no stranger to Durban as well, you've done well there in the past. It's been a while since I've been there but um, yeah now I've had my fair share of winners there. Um, I was Maris Fintin yesterday and I was looking at his father and it's amazing in small ways how much they like in that. Um, so um, yeah, we've got to look forward and uh, hope we can deliver for Mr. Rattray, Mr. and Mrs. Rattray. Do you see him settling more and more as he's maturing? I think he's going he's, to, I certainly hope so, let's put it that way, but um, he has to eventually say, like, listen, um, that we've done this before and uh, he's going to get better with it. As, a, as an individual, he's just getting stronger and stronger all the time not from the point of view of strong in his mouth and he's just he handles his work so easy he goes around the cinders like like he's on a carpet and he's just it's work to him is almost nothing now so we're going to have to do a little bit of testing work with him at gravel and uh, at Summerfelt swing him around that turn but uh, as an individual he's just I think he's only maturing now quite a challenge for you but it must be really exciting as well these are the things we pray for and when, we come, when they do come to us we mustn't shirk away, we, we've got to go with it. Absolutely, it's the things you get up for in the morning, he's a beautiful horse, he looks so chilled and relaxed here this morning, I must say you've done a fantastic job on him and he looks absolutely amazing in tip top condition. Eric we wish you all the best for the Durban season, we'll Thank be you, following yeah. you very very closely and I hope Rainbow Bridge gets into that July winner's box. Thank you Fee. Thanks Eric, it's always lovely to be here at Eric Sands Stable, I can't say more, Rainbow Bridge is looking absolutely fantastic and we wish him all the best in his Durban campaign. Following our interview with Eric Sands and Rainbow Bridge this morning, it's very fitting that we are now at Mike and Norma Rattray's Blue Peter for our second interview this morning with trainer Brett Crawford, where we'll be discussing his Durban season. Brett, great to have you on the show once again. Hi, Pete. We're looking forward to the Durban season. You've sent uh, a lovely string of eight horses and some really decent individuals amongst them. Yeah, um, you know, it's never easy to, to send a, a string up. Um, obviously, the objective for us is to try and be competitive in as many of the big races as we can. Um, we're fortunate enough that we've got a string there that's been in operation for a year and a bit now. So we have got quite a few horses in Durban already. Um, and basically, we're sending up 10, 10 more horses to, to join Peter and the string. Um, and of which eight of them will be campaigned at uh, some of the big races in, in Durban for the season. Yeah, you've got a, a very good record in Durban yourself for the, the main seasons, but uh, Peter Musket's done a fabulous job for you now with, with the yard being there all year round. 
Yeah, no doubt. I mean, since Peter's been with us, um, you know, we, we've won, I think in total, I think it's four, four group ones in the last two years. So things have gone really well for us. And obviously, we'll be hoping to add to that this season. And looking at your list of horses that have gone now, some fantastic sorts. You've got Undercover Asian, of course, you've got Front and Centre, and some, some really nice campaigners. Yeah, um, you know, obviously, uh, from a Group 1 perspective, um, Undercover Agent will be aimed at the drill or stakes leading into into the Rising Sun and then um, into the Champions Cup, um, the 1800 at the, at the end of the season. Um, you know, uh, along with him, front and centre, she'll go for the Phillies Guineas and then the Garden Province will be her main objective. Um, bold respect, he, you know, he's a good sprinter. He'll be going for the merchants and for um, the, the, the sprint on, on the Casino Horse Day. Um, that's a handicap, unfortunately, so you will have to give a lot of weight which won't be easy for him, but um, he's in great form and we're looking forward to that. And then from you know, from a different perspective, we've got Charles who ran a great race in, in the derby. He only just got touched off. So obviously he, his main focus would be to run in the Daily News 2000. Um, and then Princess Irene, you know, the Duke of Marmalade Philly that won the Jamaica Stakes on uh, the day before Queen's Plate Day on Ladies Day. Um, she'll be aimed at the Will Abington. I think she's a very progressive filly. And then, obviously, we, we've got a, a good stayer in Give Me One Night. Um, he's, he's done very little wrong throughout the season, and he, his campaign will be in the two handicaps. So he'll run in the Lonsdale, leading into the Gold Cup at the end of the season. Um, and then, pretty much, we've also got Sunset Eyes, who's gone up. You know, he's a good sprinter. He'll be aimed at the handicap sprints. Um, so, you know, obviously the, the Group 1 handicap would be his main objective if, if all goes well. So, um, you know, I think, like you say, we, we've got a select bunch of horses, but they, they've already run at, at group level and shown their, their class. And obviously we're looking forward to that. Yeah, an exciting string. And, and a lot of them will have had a break after the, the Cape summer season. They'll have gone there quite fresh. And it, it's a lovely new surroundings, new settings, great facilities. Yeah, they, um, they had a good break straight after the Cape season. They went to the farm for two and a half weeks, came back in. They, they've done some, some groundwork at home. They actually were all on the grass two weeks ago um, at Durbanville. And then they left last week on Tuesday. Um, Touchwood, all's gone well. They seem to have traveled well. Peter's happy the way they've settled in. Um, and that's the key, you know, if they travel well, then uh, basically the rest of your, your season should, should work out well. So we've got a lot, lot to look forward to, a lot of big racing coming up, and um, hopefully it'll all go well. Yeah, and the Cape season was fantastic, and, and that finish we saw in the Green Point, which Undercover Agent was involved in, was just phenomenal. And I, I would imagine we're going to have that same team of horses competing against each other again. It's going to be a great Durban season. Yeah, very much so. I think um, you know there, there's um, you know there's some really some some decent horses around at the moment, and I think it's one of the first times in a long time that horses haven't been separated due to export or so. You know, all the horses seem to still be here, um, and I'm sure they'll all meet in Durban, and um, the rivalry will continue. And chatting to Eric this morning, you're also going to have Red Rainbow Bridge join your string. And uh, as he was saying, you've got an advantage. You've got Anton Marcus, you've got top jocks coming to ride them work. And it's going to be nice for you to be stabled with him as well. Yeah, look, I mean, Eric and I go back a long way. You know, he, uh, he's a former boss of mine. So utmost respect for him. Uh, fantastic that he won, won the Met this year. So it'll be really nice to, le to lend a helping hand for him and um, another exciting horse to have in the yard. Yeah, and it's, it's great for you this year. You won't have so much pressure. You don't have to go and actually stay in Durban. Peter Muscat's doing an absolute fantastic job. He's a great guy, knows what he's doing. So you can sort of travel up and down. Definitely. Um, you know, Peter's done a, a marvellous job with the yard there. And like you say, it just gives me the, the access to be able to travel a bit more. We've got a lot of horses at home here in Cape Town, so it's nice to be able to, to move between both strings and see how the horses are progressing. Yeah, and travelling is always a worry, but you've got them there all safe and sound, and you're going to go up next week and just check them all out. Yeah, um, I will go next week. You know, obviously, we're, like I said, we're, uh, we'll start to build on their work now. There'll be a few horses going on the grass, so it'll be a good time to go and, and see what's happening. You know, we've got a busy month in April with the, the National Yearling Sales coming up, so um, there's, there's a lot to be done. 
Yeah, no, it's been a crazy couple of months. But anyway, Brett, thank you for taking the time to come and chat to us on the show. Really looking forward to the Durban season and watching your horses compete. It's going to be really good fun and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a fabulous season for you. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Always good to have Brett on the show. We really do wish him well for the Durban season. It's going to be a long season ahead, but it's going to be lots of fun and we're seeing some top horses campaigning in Durban. Ferrari was the champion older horse in Germany in 2010. He is a Group 1 winning son of dual champion racehorse and leading UK sire Oasis Dream. His racing class is backed up by a pedigree packed with champions and he hasn't let them down. 2015 Cape Champion Freshman Sire. Leading Freshman Sire by number of stakes horses. Leading Freshman Sire by average earnings per runners. Leading freshman sire by percentage of winners. Leading freshman sire by number of stakes horses. And his statistics get better and better. Now, he has 88% winners from his first crop with 39% stakes horses. 83% winners from his second crop with 25% stakes horses. 79% winners from his third crop with 18% stakes horses. And already... 54% winners from his fourth crop and 16% stakes horses with lots more to come. Ferrari Falcon comes home hard on the outside. Fortissimus is running on. Dawn calling flat to the boards. Now Ferrari Falcon gets on top of things. And Ferrari Falcon goes on by a half a length to seal the deal. Kangaroo Jack to find it out. Dolphin and Kangaroo Jack, but Kangaroo Jack now sets. And Kangaroo Jack will go on to beat Dolphin Ashkenazi Oculus. It's Kangaroo Jack with a two length lead. Second is Champagne Hayes. Then Will Pays a new predator, but Kangaroo Jack far too classy. Cosmic Light on the inside, and Trolley to run on as Rebel to the four over on the inside. Cosmic Light, the leader, Rebel to the four is running on strongly. Cosmic Light just won it. Head on Joe has built up a two, three length advantage. We're into the closing stages, and Head on Joe's not for the catching. He gears down to victory. Still Wonderwall, and he's kicked again. Wonderwall with two lanes to spare over Will Pays and Finn Shazam. What a win. Wonderwall could be a big hit in the making. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to bet on any other horse in South Africa becoming champion sire uh, in the next few years. I mean, it's, it's got to be Ferrari. Ferrari is the property of a syndicate and stands at Main Chance Farms. He is managed by Freeman Stallions.
Well, Captain of All was bred out at Riverton Stud. He was sold at the Clover Farm sale for just 100,000 Rand, and he went on to be one of the highest rated horses in South Africa. I think he retired on a 1 2 6. He's now having his first set of runners, and he was the first juvenile sire to come through with a stakes winner in the form of Captain Anne Bonny. Trained by Tara Lang, there's a story behind this, too. In fact, we'll have to get Tara Lang on the show soon because Coco is her mare. So she also ultimately bred Captain Anne Bonny, who came through to win the East Cape Phillies Nursery. Well done to them. Let's find out more from the latest update from Captain of All. Captain of All, Captain L's first son to study at Cloverfly. I got an email from from Alan Porter of Trunix, just to remind me and tell us that are we aware that we have the fastest son of Roberta in the world? Uh, what's been great about uh, Captain of All is that in his first three seasons, he's covered 356 mares, which equates to 119 mares a season. Now that, in anybody's book in South Africa, is, a, is, is really great numbers. The reports that we got out of the meeting today is that there are a number of trainers that are really excited about their captain of oars. Apparently really good temperaments and they've got really, really good actions. And what we're really excited about is although he's a horse with immense substance, he looks quite low on the ground. He's throwing horses with a lot of leg. And we believe that it's the uh, English speed, this classic speed that's coming through into his progeny. This horse was rated 126, the highest ever rating for a horse in South Africa by the NHRA. Captain Anne Bonnie, and in beyond that, Chasing Green. But Brantina with 120 to go with Captain Anne Bonnie back in second. It's Brantina, Captain Anne Bonnie is coming back along the inside, and Captain Anne Bonnie has beaten Brantina. Well, as promised, we also bring you the update on the evening held out at Havisham Park. Naja Riley and his team, well, what an evening they put on. Andrew Bond tells us more. It actually doesn't seem so long ago that advocate Nigel Riley was training racehorses at Rheinkiesfontein. And I just happened to be standing next to the dam, which a lot of horses that are retired now go and frolic and enjoy themselves, most of them in the ownership of Brett Warren. But that's another story completely. I refer here to a fantastic function that took place at Havisham Farm on Saturday the 23rd. Hello. Hello, sweet thing. And the purpose of that particular function was to introduce us to two very special racehorses. Firstly, a horse called Mufid, who raced in the care of Michael de Kock. He's the son of Duke of Marmalade. And then a horse called Wings of Desire, who's the son of Pivotal, who raced in the Investec Derby and was trained by John Gosden, and of course who won the Dante Stakes, which is the biggest pointer to the Investec Derby. So let's go and join Nigel and Katrina Riley at their beautiful site, just outside Walkerville, it's actually Daleside, and the farm of course is called Heversham Park, where a whole lot of horses will be shown to us, not least of all weanlings, yearlings, and of course those two beautiful stallions. Well, a very good evening to everyone, and uh, once again, welcome out to Heversham Park. If it's the first time that you've joined us, uh, you'll agree with me that this is a fantastic setting. 
not too far out of the hustle and bustle of Johannesburg uh, to come out to Pure Horse Country. A special welcome to everyone. We know that it's a pretty busy time and it's uh, a weekend. Uh, so we are very grateful for those people that have come out to see what uh, Hebersham Park have to offer in terms of their stallions, in terms of their yearling offering at the upcoming national yearling sales and indeed what they have to offer for you as a family maybe to visit here on the odd occasion if you're not doing anything on a busy weekend. So once again thanks to Nigel and to Katarina for bringing us out here once again and a special round of applause to them for the evening that they put together for us. We're going to be chatting to uh, Fred Bronze uh, in a moment. Uh, he'll be introducing you to the two stallions that are resident on this farm and telling you a little bit more about them. Those non-racing folk that uh, need to know a bit more about uh, the horses that are here and want to find out a bit more about racing, feel free to chat to Fred, myself, uh, to Charles Pretorius, who I'll be introducing you to in a second, to Dave Mollett, uh, to the various uh, racing people that I have. If you do want to find out a bit more about racing, I'm sure if you just uh, stretched out at arm's length, there'd be a racing person very, very close to you. I mentioned Charles. Well, Charles runs a daily online publication, which is sent out uh, to a big audience. Uh, it's called Turf Talk. It is a racing newsletter. And uh, today, between Charles and myself, we'll be running a uh, horse racing quick fire quiz for you and they're nice prizes for the winner so it's your chance to show off your racing knowledge if you think you're a horse racing aficionado then uh, you can go to head to head with other folk out here today there is a full program detailing the evening's events uh, which i'm sure you've got with you and uh, fred will be doing the stallions as i mentioned I'll be taking you through all the yearlings. It's a lovely balmy time that we're going to have, and there's lots of Greek music. Right, that's it from my side for the moment. Fred Bronze is the stallion manager. He is behind me, and he is going to take you through the two stallions. If you just focus behind the tables there, over there, the stallions are going to parade out there. They are Move Feed and Wings of Desire. Fred Bronze. Good evening everybody. This is the second stallion day that we're having here at Heversham and I'm sure a lot of you who have been here last year will notice that uh, things have changed, things are improving all the time and we're hoping that we can make Heifel breeding something special not only for ourselves but for everybody in the industry. Right, the first stallion we're going to look at now at the moment is Mufid, our first big boy that arrived here. He's by Duke of Marmalade. And this is one of his only two sons that are at stud at the moment. He's being over here, and the same age, a horse called Nutan, who's standing in Germany. So those are the two Duke of Marmalades in the world at the moment. His dam has produced three black type winners. Now, which shows it's a consistent horse when it comes to the stuff that we all want to breed, which is black type. If you look at his dam, or his dam sire, called Encosta de Lago, and Costa de Lago himself has produced almost a hundred black type horses himself. And his mares have produced over 120 black type horses. And so being by Duke of Marmalade out of an Encosta de Lago mare with all of Moussi and Mohi in the immediate dam line, the pivotal move is now to take a look at Wings of Desire. So we're going to be in a situation when we have Wings of Desire who's got an enormous pedigree, and if you guys look at that pedigree, and what's behind that pedigree, he's got a full brother and a full sister that were all black type. And he's an absolutely incredible blood. He was, came second in the uh, King George and Queen Elizabeth Stakes, fourth in the Epsom Derby. Now, to be fourth in the Derby has to be an extremely special horse. So this horse has got enormous potential, and he is just going to blossom. Everything in the world is sort of saying is, this horse is going to be something to be remembered. His fees at the moment, 25,000 bucks. So check him out. You're going to make the right decision if you bring your mares to him. He's absolutely stunning. Wings of Desire 
gone in the space of one month from finishing third in a maiden to winning a Dante. Have you ever had a horse progress so far in such a short space of time? It's not ideal. You'd love to have run it uh, too, but it wouldn't uh, have suited this horse to have done so. But, uh, and I like, uh, I took him out of the Derby on Master 7, as I had to confess to the world. He's got a great mind on him, good constitution. He's in good form. He will stay the trip. We have to be honest that a lack of experience could be a problem problem for him in a big field but at the same time he's a big boy and if they run into him they'll know they they bumped into him because he's very solid and uh, as long as he trains well up to the derby he will be supplemented back in again and he went and won his dante so once he won his dante he's pointing to the derby if he'd finished fourth in the dante he'd have been heading where i originally planned him king edward the at royal ascot and so after having looked at a few yearlings and weanlings and older horses for that matter the party went on into the night. Brilliant food, great entertainment, and a wonderful spirit of camaraderie that prevailed at Haversham Park. This is a place for the future of the Highfield breeding operation. Well, that's it from tonight's edition. We look forward to joining you next week on Breeding to Win.